Welcome back to Kickstart with Ann. Hello, everybody. It's been a while. So where have I been? I have been away having my baby. Our fifth baby girl is here. Time for a Prego photo shoot. Look at how big I'm getting. Oh my goodness. And we are excited exactly as we prayed for. Safe delivery, healthy baby. She's beautiful. If you want to send something for the baby, I will pin the registry down below in the description. If you'd like to celebrate with us in that way, feel free to. Let's talk about not being here tomorrow. Why do we live like we're going to be here tomorrow? We talk crazy, get out of character. Sometimes, hey, we deserve those off moments and off day. Sometimes circumstances can make people get out of character. And especially when people are provoked, you know, they may say some things that they might later regret. And... But we have to be conscious of we may not be here tomorrow. Now, some people will challenge me. And I won't really say challenge me because I believe in this way, which is if you've had a vision or a dream, then you presume that you're going to be here to see it come true. Correct? Well, I'm going to challenge you on that. Dr. Martin Luther King had a dream also. And if you have went to public school... You know what his dream was. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted. Every hill and mountain shall be made low. The rough places will be made plain. And the crooked places will be made straight. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see it together. And those of us who are li living right now and watching this video, you see the effects of Dr. Martin Luther King's dream right especially with race relations just because you had a dream or a vision it doesn't mean that you're going to be here to see it even if you saw yourself in that vision or dream it could be that you know you're in that dream because you were a part of it you helped spearhead that movement so of course you see yourself in it because you had something to do with it like certain people would have never made a particular move had you not done it first had they not seen your example, they would have never made that move. So perhaps you may have had a vision or a dream and you saw yourself in there along with other people, um, you know, being successful or doing whatever you saw in that dream of vision. I want to talk about when we act ugly. When people act ugly and you think, oh, I'll just apologize tomorrow. I'll get it right with that person when I see them later on. Oh, when I see them at the family reunion next year or maybe during the holidays, I'll get with them and I'll see them. But who told you you'll be alive when that time comes? Who told you that that person will be there? They may have passed on by the time that date gets here or they may not be able to come. And now you're holding your apology, banking on them being there and they've passed on. What do you do then? This is why it's so important and it's outlined. Now I'm going to go to the word of God. If there is an alt, if you have an alt with your brother or sister, it's important that you go to them and make things right. Give that apology. It's in that olive branch. Whenever you realize that you have wronged someone by your words, actions, intent, whatever, if you know you have did something wrong and it's eating you up on the inside, it is very important for you to get it right then. That is your cue to make that phone call. That is your cue to set up that dinner or lunch date because you may not get that opportunity that you're planning. You see, we as humans, we make plans. And what is, how does that statement go? When we plan, it makes God laugh. That's because he holds the master plan. He knows tomorrow in and out better than you know today. So it's important that we live according to that scripture. And if we all become adults and mature about our actions, really, the scripture says that if there's an alt, well, internet, what's an alt? 
an offense, if somebody has been offended, if there's been an argument and someone uh, is, 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 is upset about it, feeling some type of way, it's some smoke in the air, it's a gray area, it's a big elephant in the room. If any of those things exist, that means the same thing as an alt. There's something that needs to be repaired, fixed, restored, handled. So it's very important, you guys. I hope you're listening to me. Go and make things right. If you show it out on somebody in front of people, you need to apologize in front of people. If it was two or three people there, maybe you need to call them up on the phone and make that apology separately. Or if it's possible for you to get them all together and say, hey, not only am I making it right with this person, but you two people were here too. You saw me get out of character and I want to let you know it wasn't my intent to talk like that, to act like that. However, I was already having a bad day and it didn't take much for me to go overboard. But I do apologize and I hope it doesn't happen again. I don't want to go whoops upside your head. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't want this to happen again, so I'm extending an apology. Let's be forthcoming about that, you guys. And if we do it, according to the scriptures, it says that if there is a if 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 you go to take your gift before God, before to the altar, you're trying to present something before God, especially trying to go to God in prayer, and you remember that there's an alt. There's an offense that you've had with your brother or sister. You're supposed to leave your gift at the altar and go back and make things right. But that's not it. It's a two-way street. It says, if you remember that there is an alt, not only are you supposed to go back, but the person who's offended is also supposed to come, is supposed to, come to you. So whether you are the person who offended someone or you are the person who is offended, you're supposed to go to each other to make things right. Okay, so if we all become adults about this thing, about disagreements, we should be meeting each other halfway. It should be like, hey, I was coming to talk to you about something and that person should be saying, hey, I was just coming to talk to you too. That's an, that's an adult move right there. As I said, we have off moments, we get off color, we get off tone, but it's important that we go back and make things right. And we make things right. Let's be careful not to hold grudges. That's another thing that's coming in between you and your father. Like that's, that's like a stone that's, that's blocking you standing away between you and God and standing between you and moving forward. It's a huge stone. So once we learn how to release things, release, you know, let go, forgive, we can move forward without the weights around our ankles, without the weights on our mind. Well, answer that. What do you mean by the weights on my mind? It means... You can't go anywhere and around everyone without feeling some type of way. Now, you may go around someone and they may have offended you, but when you've let it go and you're moving forward with your life and seeing progress, you're not worried about a stupid argument that happened two years ago. You're not worried about an argument that happened two months ago because you've already crossed that bridge. You had the conversation. You extended that olive branch of apology and say, hey, you know what? I don't like what happened in between us. I apologize that it did get so nasty, but for moving forward, like, can we just have some respect for each other? I apologize for the way things went. I'm not saying that you have to be best friends again, but we do have to apologize and make things right and so that we can move forward in peace in our, in our lives. Because everyone who's moving forward, it doesn't mean that they're moving forward in peace. Some people are moving forward and they are still carrying the weights around their ankles the weights of unforgiveness, the weights of, I remember what you did to me, the weights of, I can never forgive you. That's a weight. You might never forget. Of course we don't forget. Our brains are like computers. So that forgive and forget cliche, it sounds good. But the way I use it is I forget to the extent that you don't have to worry about me washing your face with it. I remember, but I'm not holding it against you because you may never do that again. Now, I'm not going to necessarily let you come right here again for you to slap me in the face or for you to stab me in my face either. But I'm not going to um, let it be a stumbling block that gets in the way of me and my progress because the future is bright. And if you have had a dream or a vision, I'm sure it's important 
that you see that one day. I'm sure that you want to actually live in the moment of that vision for you to say, you know what? I saw this before. It's like deja vu. Or for you to say, oh my God, I have arrived. I'm here. This is what I dreamed about. This is my vision. I am finally here. I'm sure you want to arrive to that point of your life with peace in your heart, peace in your mind, without having any grudges, without having unforgiveness, like all of that junk, like you're letting that stuff go along your path. Like the further you go in life, the higher you go, the older we get, the more wise we should become. And you know what else? The more free we should be. The higher we go, we should have all the weights, you guys. It's just like an airplane. When you go to get on the airplane, you can't take all of the extra baggage. You can only take so much baggage and it have to be within a certain weight. Why? Because there's a rule for that. The, the airplane can't take off if it has a certain, if it's over the capacity as far as weight. So that's why everything has to be uh, measured and weighed. And the same thing goes for us. If humans care that much about an airplane, about being safe in the air, how much should you care about your mind and your life? We can't take all of that junk with us. And I'm talking about the junk of offenses and things. But let's do our part with going back and making it right, understanding that words don't have recall. Once we put it out there, we can't take it back. Oh, well, we can apologize, but if you've allowed six months to pass, since you had an argument with someone, your words, criticism, and everything that you said has had a chance to fester within them. And that's if they didn't rebuttal it. If they didn't pray about it or meditate to try to get all that negativity out of them, that stuff has more than likely took root inside of them. And they'll never look at you the same. This is why I'm saying take care of it early. As soon as you realize you have wronged someone, get it right. Don't wait six months and say, I'll wait till I see that person. No, call them up, schedule a meet up, talk to them on the phone, send that text message, that SMS, jump in the DM and say, hey, I need to talk to you immediately. It's important and you need to make it right. Because if you are representing the higher power, God, Yahweh, Jehovah, if you're representing God, it's important that you are a woman or man of integrity. It's important that when you do something wrong, that you are quick to make sure that you call it out to make it right. It's important that you know how to restore relationships, being a person of God, because the Christ, he talked about how we should live according to the kingdom and kingdom living is not walking around having hate in your heart towards people. It's walking around in freedom. You might have to pray for the same person who you had an argument with. You might have to pray or, or coach, counsel the same person who you had an alt against. This is why it's important to let things go and move forward so we can totally be used by God. We all get provoked sometimes, but getting out of character every time someone says something that offends you, it shouldn't be. We have to learn some self-control. We're not kids anymore on the playground. He hit me, so I'm going to hit her back. She hit me, so I'm going to hit her back. We're not kids anymore. We are adults, and it's time that we act like it. And stop saying you have an off day. Every day is not your off day. <laughs> I hope that this has been highly beneficial to you. Share this with someone. Share this with someone who's ill-tempered, <laughs> someone who has a short temper, someone who has a lack of self-control. Maybe this will help. And this is this is not to throw the book at anyone or throw anyone under the bus. This is about development. This is what this channel is all about. Kickstart Within, where we motivate, illuminate, liberate, and we accelerate. That's my favorite one, accelerate. We move forward and we step on the gas, baby. We don't have any time to waste. Life is short. Y'all take care. Until next time.